Okay, I am uh, going to demonstrate how to make a, a dynamic histogram. And uh, these are useful when uh, the data that you are graphing tends to change, all right, in a, in a, uh, in a setting like a Monte Carlo simulation. All right, and uh, I've sent a fair amount of this up in advance, so I'm just going to walk you through what I've done. Uh, over here, I generated uh, random IQ scores, all right, so... Uh, based on the normal distribution, all right, with a mean of 100 and a uh, standard deviation of 15, all right, and uh, here's the formula I used to do that, and uh, I just I just got rid of the decimals at the end, so I used I, I wrapped the whole thing up in the round function, all right, so I generated 500 numbers like that, okay. Now to make a histogram, I need some other numbers, uh, starting with the count. All right, so how many uh, random numbers are am I dealing with? Uh, and uh, I generated 500 randomly. Okay, I need the max and the min so I can uh, figure out the limits of the data. Okay, and I need the uh, number of bins that I want to organize my data into or summarize my data into. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to need to figure out uh, how wide each bin should be. All right, so I'll just add the formulas that I used here okay and yeah so that's not a formula I just I just typed in 10 I did use the Sturgis method to to decide to uh, categorize the data into 10 bins all right but here's the other formulas that I used okay all right so then I set up a little table all right where I am actually going to start sorting the data so I'm going to make a frequency table first and then I'll make the histogram um, and uh, for the for the first lower class limit, I just anchored it to the minimum uh, data point that we see, okay. And then uh, I added uh, the bin width to that, all right. And you can see that I if I put the formula up there, you can see it. Um, you can see that I subtracted off one, and that is to uh, to include exactly uh, ten units wide data bins. All right, so if you just sort of count through that, uh, you'd see that, okay, I'm going to see anything between 54 and 63, and there are actually 10 data points there, okay? All right, uh, over here, what I did was I set up a, um, a separate range for the, for the legend, so I'm going to use this for the, for the legend once we make our chart, okay? And I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so I just basically uh, concatenated the contents of the lower class limit column and the upper class limit column. All right. Okay, so now I'm ready to show you how to uh, make the uh, frequency table. All right, and to do this, I'm going to use the uh, frequency function. And the frequency function is a, an array function. It works a little differently than uh, the standard spreadsheet function in that I have to select all of the cells where I want the uh, the function to uh, to calculate first all right and then I have to finish the formula a little differently than I would uh, with a standard spreadsheet formula okay so I'm going to start by typing in the formula name all right it's equals frequency and um, I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the data array it takes two arguments data array bins array you know, I guess I'll do it the old-fashioned way and just kind of click and drag down. All right, so there's my 500 data points. All right, and then the uh, the bin array actually just need the upper class limit, and Excel is smart enough to figure out how to sort the data based on the upper class limit. Okay, and you can you can look at the help to see how it does this. Uh, I'm going to close the formula off with a closing parenthesis. I'm going to hold the shift and the control key and then press enter to finish the array function. Okay, so you can see that, okay, it fills in, uh, it sorts all the data uh, appropriately. All right, all right, so I'll finish off the frequency table, all right, with a relative frequency and then a cumulative frequency, and then we'll make our histogram. Okay, so uh, relative frequency is just going to be the uh, number of observations in a specific bin or category, all right, divided by uh, the total number of observations. 
all right? And uh, this will be uh, an absolute reference, so I can just copy the formula down. I actually just need to reference the row, okay? And, and you'll notice that every time I do a calculation here, uh, the random numbers, because of the nature of the random function that this these numbers are generated uh, from, uh, every time I do a calculation, I'm going to get a new uh, a new set of random numbers generated. All right, so this this data will change a couple times. All right, and uh, that's what's going to really make it dynamic. All right, cumulative frequency, just a running total of relative frequencies. All right, so. Okay, once I get it started, I can just copy it down. All right, and yes, the final row will always sum to 1. All right, and um, now we're ready to, to put in our histogram. Okay. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is select the data that I want to graph. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go to uh, Insert, and I'm going to insert a column chart. Uh, I'm just going to select the clustered column, all right. And so, at a rough uh, at a rough shot, um, that's a that's pretty much what we want, all right. I'm going to make a few adjustments here, all right. I'm going to move it down so uh, I don't really block things out, okay. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit, okay. All right, so uh, I'm going to get rid of the stuff that I don't need. I, I don't need the legend. All right, uh, I'm going to fix the uh, the gap width here since it's a histogram and since we're talking about a continuous variable, these bars should touch. All right, so I'm going to make that happen by right-clicking on one of the bars, going into Format Data Series. All right, and I'm going to change the uh, gap width from 150% down to zero. Okay, and you can kind of see what's happening out here. Um, I'm going to uh, change the border around each one of these bars just so we can see where the bins kind of start and finish. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just select a different color. It doesn't really matter what color, uh, just so we can see where, the, where each category finishes. All right. Okay, so more or less uh, that's how we want the data to appear. Uh, and so the last thing I'm going to do is is update the x-axis, uh, the legend. All right, I'm I'm going to do that by uh, going into select data. Okay, and um, under the horizontal category axis label, I'm going to hit edit, and then I'm going to come out to the spreadsheet, point, click, and drag to select where the legend is going to come from. Okay. And then I'll just make the chart a little bigger so things spread out. All right, and I'll I'll change the font here. Okay, and uh, if you don't want to see the the legend, I can actually hide it. All right, so I'm just going to select the data and then uh, I'll turn the the font white. Okay, so uh, still there, and then if I Go to formulas and then um, hit calculate now. You'll see the dynamic nature of this histogram. And uh, that's all I have.